This is my August 2015 vlog. I am just about to head into my last year, fourth year of university, and I wanted to share a bit about um, how I choose my courses because, you know, fourth time is the charm, right? <laughs> so I think that I narrowed it down to four steps you should take to ensure that you are registered in an amazing class that you will hopefully do well in. First thing is um, join a faculty specific Facebook group or you know, major specific Facebook group. So for me, I'm in, um, I'm in the anatomy and cell biology Facebook group um, that's for McGill and then I'm in like the physiology Facebook group. You know, students converse on there, people will post like, you know, XMED 502, how is this course? How is the prof? What percentage was quizzes? And like a lot of people have taken these courses so then you can get feedback on before even, you know, going to the class on the first day and then getting the syllabus, you can get the syllabus right away and you can um, hear feedback from the students whether they thought, you know, this course was recorded or if it wasn't recorded if it was heavily weighed on writing, or if it was heavily weighed on like, multiple choice exams. Getting feedback from other students is always great because um, you can kind of see what worked for certain students and you know, what would work for you and what wouldn't. Uh, second thing that I think is important to do is to research bird courses. Um, bird courses, I'm sure everyone knows what bird courses. It's like an easy course. It's not actually a course on birds. Um, this is something that you should do, but I don't necessarily, uh, I wouldn't count on it solely because what I think is an easy course might be completely different from what you think is an easy course if I love writing and you love multiple choice. But it's always a safe bet to Google, you know, bird courses at McGill or like join a bird courses group and kind of just engage what courses people found interesting and like more doable than others. I don't know about at other universities, but at McGill, a bird course means that if you try really, really, really hard, it's possible to get an A. It's usually not like, yeah, just register in the class and like show up and you'll get an A. It's usually like you still need to put quite a bit of effort, but at least you get an A. Most courses are like you put a lot of effort and um, congratulations, you've got yourself a C minus. <laughs> Yeah, so the second thing though, it, it might be worth it to check out what other people think are easy bird courses. Um, third thing I think that's important is go to ratemyprof.com. Um, you know, especially if you really want to take a course and there's multiple professors, you can choose what section you want to be in. Once in a while you might get like a butthurt student who like just happened to not click with teacher and then there's a really bad review but there's usually like loads of reviews that you can read and you can judge yourself um, and I think that's important sometimes if you have a required course and there's four professors um, you can choose which section you want to be in you know um, and yeah so right my prof I think has been a lifesaver for me throughout university and my fourth piece of advice is really just take courses that you like um, I know everyone says this, but for those of you who have followed my vlogs, um, you will know that I originally studied uh, bio, like I registered for biomedical sciences at McGill. And by second year university, I was basically failing out of school. I really, really, really didn't like the courses I was taking, but at the same time, I didn't really have a choice because a lot of the courses were required. So I was in this place where, you know, I needed to take these courses, I wasn't doing well, and I felt really crappy about myself. Um, and I think by the end of second year, I decided, okay, I am going to continue with um, anatomy and cell biology, but I'm going to switch that to a liberal degree as well as get a minor in East Asian studies. I was getting so tired of just pure memorization, I was getting tired of the medical terminology and just like, I think like finite details that I thought that were just irrelevant towards my life. I was so mad about everything in science. So I decided, hey, like, I want to get to do some reading again. I want to write. So I decided to get a minor in East Asian Studies and that has been the perfect combination for me. Um, I have learned to really like the sciences again, really like the multiple choice and like the thinking um, and like narrowing down the answer and memorization 
And I really learned to like, you know, the readings and the writings I need to do, you know. It's, it's, it's a good balance of both. I think if it was all East Asian studies and I had just like books and books and books to read every week, I would also be dying. So I found my balance and um, that has been, that has made my third year university so much better and I'm really excited for my fourth year because with the way that my courses are set up, I have a lot more choice now than I did before. So I personally do advocate that you will do well in courses and classes that you're actually interested in. So just to summarize my four points, number one, uh, join a Facebook group, just join something where you can see the breakdown of the course and get the feedback from other students. Point two, research what the bird courses are. They may or may not be easy, but at least then you have an idea of what other people think is more doable than others. Um, point three, go to ratemyprof.com. Um, especially helpful if there's multiple profs for one course. You can see which section you want to be in. And point four, structure your schedule, structure your major, your minor, um, your degree in a way where you're actually learning things that you want to learn because you will love yourself and you will love school so much more. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's my August vlog. Best of luck with course selection, everyone.